Welcome back to Future Multilingual. <laughs> we are back with Dr. Diane Neubauer. Um, we're here, as you'll probably know if you've seen the last video, to discuss the acquisition of Chinese, and in particular, the writing system and the tones. Hi again, Diane. Hi. Okay, so like this was a big question that I saw. Mm -hmm. This is like, how do people go about it? Because I mean, I've seen people talking on language Twitter about like practicing writing in Chinese and they seem to be taking a skill building approach. They seem mm -hmm. to be developing knowledge one step at a time rather than going through input. Right. Is it possible to go through input? To, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> um, okay. With, with maybe a few caveats about what do I mean by that kind of input? So do I mean picking up native speaker texts that have a hundred new characters to you at the same time? Can you just pick up? No, no. But, but if what you're doing is looking for those, like we mentioned in the first uh, discussion, if we're looking for materials that are at the level or below the level of what you can understand when you hear it, you're looking for materials that have a message of some kind that, okay. that can be interpreted from that, um, that, okay. that likewise in the written form. If you have some reading material that's simple, that has just a few new characters to you and okay. is designed to repeat those few new characters multiple times in that reading material. So, do graded yes, readers you can exist? primarily at least go then. Yes, there are graded readers. Um, that's another blog post that I have that I could share a link with you. And yeah. I've collected some that, that particularly one of the things I look for in graded reading material for primarily for students, not so much for myself at this point. I'm okay doing native speaker content, just fine. Um, but for learners who are brand new to Chinese, I'm, I write a lot of those. Um, and there are other authors that wow. write a lot of books for that. So I don't have published okay. books, but I do a lot on YouTube that I call read along videos that okay. are designed to connect that sound meaning that's now strong in the minds of that Chinese learner. And then okay. this is how it so looks. It's this definitely it star audio, move on to reading. That's what I find for Chinese is really helpful. Once you get okay. to a certain point, you know, you're sort of intermediate ish. And you can more often pick up some kind of prepared reading material, still probably graded reading content primarily, okay. so that you can understand the whole message, not just pick out a word here or there. That's a great skill, but it's a minimal skill. You know, it's not reading comprehension. It's just finding recognizable characters. So it's a it's cool to be able to do, but but I really want people to be able to read whole text that they can understand Especially very well. Especially for motivation, well. though. I mean, that is the more motiv for, especially in terms of motivation, though, like an intrinsic yeah. motivation. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> kind of like me with messages. my experience with vocab practice on flashcards. I mean, I was so demotivated by that. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it, likewise, if all you're doing is just going, I recognize those five characters out of a big text. Yeah. Like, I mean, it is difficult. Oh, oh so. that's, yeah. I mean, you're, I, you're I, relying I mean, on some external motivation to one day be good there, no? <laughs> yeah, there are a few people that are really into that. But, you know, I have met a handful, <laughs> but um, okay. a lot of them then become polyglots because they just think the process of learning a language is so cool. <laughs> so, OK, but but for but people, for, for, for most typically, people, efficiency yeah, wise, as that's well. not going to make. Yeah, okay. not going to keep but us going. Just so getting something that's a message we understand that we're interested in at least okay. to some degree, that's really going to help. So, uh, just because we will so, um, That McQuillan. kind of reading material is hard to find. Okay. So we'll have Dr. Jeff McQuillan on the uh, on the channel next year. And he talks a lot cool. about the, pro the going up the levels. No? <laughs> and also efficiency. Because yes, yeah. I think that's two things that our, um, our listeners might be interested in. How does it look <laughs> going up the levels? You've talked a little bit about that. It's, it starts with mm -hmm. audio and reading until intermediate level, would okay. you say? Um, and, and it's not so much like I'm saying people need to always have audio support on some kind of like a video thing. I think that's one type of tool. Um, okay. But also if you're in a classroom where the teacher 
guides reading aloud. I okay. think students can also very often read aloud for themselves as a group or okay. independently pretty early, as long as they, again, they've got this strong sound to meaning connection. They're seeing text that just like, oh, mm -hmm. that's what that looks like. Um, they, they can do that. I don't have any objection to students okay. being part of that. They don't okay. solely need only to hear, I guess is my point. It's okay, okay with me if they're seeing text and they, they also read some aloud. That's okay. But they can um, get graded it, readers to take them to intermediate level. Yes, for sure. So it, again, I think it's that super, super beginner level that's the trickiest uh, for, mm -hmm. for learners to find, especially. Okay. And I, I've I'm trying to do things to help Chinese language teachers and content producers know some ideas for how to write material for that level okay. of student. Okay. I really think that's the bottleneck. Um, and on, on the channel where I have some of those kinds of read along videos designed okay. for first time reader, okay. um, I've yeah. had some lovely comments from people saying, oh, I think now I have some hope, you know, like that maybe oh, I can do Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and this, those texts are designed again with just a few characters yeah. that are newly introduced, and they're used in context with okay. meaningful some support from images and things. But yeah. um, they repeat those words in different and, sentences in a discourse in a longer. And text. so the process is actually no because a lot of the time with comprehensible input, comparable. You you uh, you have to trust the process. No. But you would say that yeah. your learners at first, they're recognizing that that they're able to deal with texts that are becoming more complicated. Yeah, and, and I think that's it. It's not they don't always totally realize. And here's okay. what I found, like with the videos that I've used or when I was doing more face to face classroom teaching, I didn't do so much where I was giving people videos to use on their own. Um, I was guiding reading together corally okay. in the classroom with that same kind of a text. I learned this, um, it's called Cold Character Reading by Terry Waltz, Dr. Terry okay. Waltz. Um, she developed this approach some years ago and I used it and maybe adapt it to my own thinking and my own setting. Um, but the, the idea is that you're giving that audio support where it's needed. Okay. The text slowly build and they continue to reuse the words that they've seen before. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, the teacher can kind of help scaffold that. Um, for independent learners, I do think it's a little trickier, but um, there are now a number of people producing graded reading material. It gets easier to find at the intermediate level again. Okay. So that like, to my mind, um, 300 characters and up is starting to be a little bit more of an intermediate level, actually, okay. in terms okay. of like the overall language skills that the person probably has. So okay. uh, those are easier to find for sure. Those under 300 characters where you're uh -huh. still, you know, 10 characters to like 50 characters, those are harder to find, but they do exist. Okay, so this could be, and you would, because um, I think a lot of people, their worry is that they want to have some type of control of their learning. So they want to know exactly what it is they've learned. And that's perhaps yeah. why acquisition is unattractive. But in sometimes terms it can frustrate people. So it, it, it's another point where I will coach teachers and what I learned to do in my own teaching practice was point those things out to students. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the ways they could do that was by comparing, pick up the thing that you read six months ago and go, that's so easy now. It yeah. was hard when I did it before. Like I, I had to work. Now it's yep. not, you know, they, giving them that sense of their progress, going back and listening to something that they really had to keenly listen okay. to before to understand yeah. and then now feel how much ease they feel in it they can play it at a faster speed that kind and of at what stage do they begin to notice that this is actually a more efficient strategy <laughs> than <laughs> memorizing uh, i don't know i don't know because i i think not everybody has both experiences and so okay. when you just know the memorized route um I think it takes some faith to to just go, okay, I'll just try this for six months and see what happens. Because okay. I think that's enough time to go, okay, I'm sold. And then maybe yeah. you want to, maybe there's certain things that you want to do little focus practice on. Like I was saying, like um, you need to know this certain phrase and it's a little past your your real acquired language sense, but you're going to be in this social setting and you want to be able to say this one thing. You can memorize your way into that little tiny piece as a, as a stopgap. That, I think okay. that's legitimate, but but that's not your overall aim. You know? So I guess I, I keep bringing up, 
Yeah, it can, that doesn't develop your overall language ability. Uh, that's True. just a it's really a different system, perhaps. No, I, it's a different. I would it's say a different yeah, language honestly. system, no. That you're like yeah, the, one is an acquired system, knowing, the other. Yeah, yeah, okay. kind of knowing about language versus um, knowing language, knowing yeah. language directly. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go to our final question, and this is one that has been a hot topic. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I want to... For know, teachers too, yeah. Chinese teachers debate about this as well. So can, this can, is a fun one. Can you, because, you know, I think this is more interesting to more than just Chinese learners. So can you mm -hmm. give us a little bit of context? So just for people like me, who really don't know what tones mean, <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. can you explain to us I mean, I've never learned it. Yeah, just so we know what we're talking about. So what are we talking <laughs> about? Yeah, so what mm -hmm. are tones? Yeah, I'm going to go over to my little whiteboard that's behind me on the wall over here. Okay. Um, so in, uh, this is a kind of a classic one that people will pick. So okay. in Chinese, we this is not an accent mark. It's a tone mark. And in Mandarin, there are four or kind of five tones there's sort of a quiet one that doesn't really get a mark usually okay. um and then there's a high flat one okay there's one that rises there's one that's pretty low but it's written with a v as if it goes down and up it's really more like it's just really low kind of bounces low and then okay. uh one that's sharply falling okay. so um so i'll say them just so you can kind of hear and okay. i'll point to it as i say it so ma 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 Wow. Ma, ma, ma. So if you're paying attention not to the M and the A part, but to the intonation, yeah. that's not the right term for it, the, uh, the tone of the word. Movement. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, okay. where these, I think in a more typical kind of an approach, teachers and students both believe I need to get this right from the beginning in isolation, I need to practice each sound or or compare sounds and identify, oh, third tone, third tone. I would say that's, like you just said, it's a separate system, being able okay. to, to analyze the tones yeah. and yeah. to explicitly pick out, oh, that was a second tone. Um, that's a separate thing. And, and if you ask a native speaker, like, oh, what tone is that word? They typically will pause and go, I think it's third tone. Like they just do it. It's it's innately part of the that that word in their mental framework okay. for the language. Um, and so if if it happens to a learner that they're like, wait, what tone was that? Um, fourth tone, yeah. wasn't it? Then mm -hmm. I know they've got it. They've got it because they don't have to analyze it. So um, so here's the problem with that. Just focusing in on tones, yeah. four tones. Yeah. I think it can be helpful to know, oh, there's this feature of the language that my native language doesn't have. English. Okay. That, that can be helpful. I think when you have a word in isolation where you got confused, getting to compare and contrast can be helpful. And okay. my students will ask that kind of question sometimes. Like, yeah. I thought you said ma was the question word, but I heard, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, because I said mom, but you're used to that word. So um, here, let's compare. So ma. Ma, do you hear the difference? Yeah. Like, so like that, that's a little bit of focus on form, right? But okay. it's at the time of need. It's that okay. pop-up so idea. So this just-in-time knowledge, no? Yeah, yeah. And it's to help clarify the meaning of two things that got misinterpreted. So what you're um, talking so that about is clarifying helpful. input rather yeah. than teaching in or yeah. explicitly in order to produce. Yeah, and to be able to notice something about the input or perceive it maybe is the better word yeah, not notice okay. in the the schmidt uh 1990 hypothesis yeah, yeah, I read that. what i mean by that <laughs> but to be able to process too, the yeah. whole of that input source for meaning so in english we would say all oh, this means the same thing yeah maybe i mean we'd yeah. have different contexts and you'd see maybe the meaning varies a little but yeah. but in chinese those tones indicate something very important about the meaning of those words so you have to perceive that eventually but but here's the thing usually in language in use 
-hmm. we're not focused on one word at a time. We have no, a context. Exactly. We have yeah. a situation that we're okay. in. And yeah. so we can tell that somebody is talking about hemp or mm -hmm. talking about like yelling at somebody mm -hmm. um, because it's what those two words mean. Or well, they're talking about Because our brain horse. fills things in, no? It fills exactly. things in. I mean, even exactly. people who um, have some hearing loss can continue to understand because... Yes their brain knows that pattern they're filling you, things in yeah <laughs> the mind is really quite amazing in the kinds of things that it'll do and it'll do it even if you have perfect hearing and you have everything it, yeah, it, yeah 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 it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brain, brains are finding the easy way all the time they're yeah. trying to simplify the work done so that mm -hmm. you're not processing as hard yeah because um, so if you I think had to process why, every sound it would be yeah <laughs> i think that's why people who don't have a tonal language background miss tones to some degree at the beginning. However, what I find is I think it's really interesting with learners whose first languages are European languages. So French yeah. and English and German and um, other Dutch, Dutch have taught people who are Dutch. They are able to hear me speaking with them in Chinese and through the opportunity to hear words in context, in meaningful questions, sentences, stories, conversations. As they hear those words over an hour, two hours, three hours, when they are starting to produce the language naturally, I'll call it, when they're mm -hmm. they're responding to my questions and, and instead of just nodding or shaking their head, they're saying something in Chinese back to me, yeah. their pronunciation is very understandable. Like okay. I never taught upfront stuff about it's, tones. Okay. I just okay. am talking to them in Mandarin and those, so that includes tones and well, as I hear them start to give answers they they are understandable and so occasionally there'll be a little thing here's here's okay. a classic one yeah. um, this versus this I don't know mm -hmm. actually this isn't a common s syllable it's usually going to be these two words are let me put a whole word there si huan means likes Sure means like is okay. or am, are, was, were kind of thing. Okay. So um C, that X confuses people and then the SH confuses because we have one sound in English where there are two similar sounds in Chinese. So uh, that is the moment one, calling to Dr. Garcia sure. when the people have problems. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so those take more time for people to readily distinguish. You're because training your ear. Or perceive, um, and then, you know, it's the perception of these sounds. Yes, to no? perceive. That's yes, yes. That's what I mean by training your ear. You're like fine tuning. Oh, my ear didn't have to distinguish these two before. They both yeah. meant the same thing in English, but here we're gonna, you know, or at least they sound similar. It's just out of interest, because it's something that's interests me. Yeah. Uh, would you, so you would say that there is no critical period. You would say that people are able to create these two distinct sound categories as adult learners. Yeah, as yeah, as adult learners. And I think more recent research has challenged the the extreme version of a critical period where a, some type of language does need to begin by age, I don't know for sure, two, two, oh, three, yeah. four. Um, but but um as adults, I don't think there's a critical period where you can't perceive. Now, we will probably speak with an accent if you're learning a language after yeah. puberty-ish. Yeah, um, but, yeah. but, but I think there's a difference between a pleasing accent, like mm -hmm. native speakers hear and understand you. Um, that's good mm -hmm. enough. Like to not ever be noticed as a second language speaker of the language I think is not a goal that we have to have. Well, I, 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 my, I mean, my my own my own brief stint at doing a little bit of research was on was into perfectionism and language anxiety, and I oh, totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm yeah. a big perfectionist, so it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm I demand of myself what I didn't just say. <laughs> you know, I did don't don't do what I add to my own. Yeah, okay. I do find it fun when I'm on the phone or when I'm behind someone and I say something in Mandarin. And then they find out like that I'm a white woman from the US. They and they look and go, oh, I, I've actually wow. had people startled at seeing who it was that had just spoken that. Um, and so that's fun. You know, it doesn't happen all the time. Um, but 
uh, if I'm pushed to the edges of my language ability, you'll know, oh, yes, she's a second language speaker. But can I communicate the, the level of what I need to in yeah. the context? Yeah, I'm OK. So uh, to finish this piece, mm -hmm. like, let's say I find that students aren't getting this sound out, uh, yeah. but they're doing something that might be more like this, or maybe it's the a third sound, the English, okay. English SH sound. I might do some comparing. And again, I'd be producing it. So okay. and asking them, are you hearing an X sound or the SH sound? Okay. Which one do you hear? Okay. So so like for 10 seconds, like so a little. This is training thing. perception. It is not training the mouth. The mouth kind of comes along without okay. much effort, in my experience doing this kind okay. of thing. Again, okay. they're hearing understood language a lot. They're. Okay. Um, they're getting a lot of exposure to words in context, but mm -hmm. not so many words all at once. Um, yeah. Um, one other interesting thing, it, this isn't my own teaching practice, but um, there is a uh, comprehensible input based teaching approach called automatic language growth. And they, mm -hmm. they take a lighter, um, a lighter view of comprehensibility, I would say, for the beginner. They're not as concerned as I am that, that people understand phrases and sentences because i'm asking them to respond even if it's just a head nod head shake okay in automatic language growth or alg they do a lot of input and their goal really is that native speaker like pronunciation ability even okay. for adult learners so okay. they get hours and hours like thousands of hours in a year or two and really encourage students to just listen and hear the language a lot okay. and not worry about all of your, I mean, are, are they comprehending from them or is a lot of it just washing they're, over? They're at least getting the gist, like a okay. vague <laughs> gist sometimes is okay for them at okay. the beginning on a higher level of comprehension for students. But, um, but there's a range, you know, and so they, they take a little, that's what I mean by a lighter approach, but, but their goal is that they get there. And mm -hmm. over those hours and hours and hours of coursework, um, they, they essentially they have two teachers who are interacting with each other. Occasionally, they'll ask a question that students can nod their head or say no or answer in their own native language as beginners. Okay. Um, and then only only later do they do reading. So, again, they're they're aiming to really develop such a native like ear that okay. the production that is highly delayed comes out very native like as well so now okay. the thing about that is i just mentioned thousands of hours of time right yeah. not everybody has that opportunity and time um, and maybe not doesn't have that goal either so most of the people that i'm teaching want to develop a little bit of proficiency in chinese they they are okay. not yeah. anticipating living in china they are not okay. anticipating having to perform professional duties in mandarin chinese and so their their goal isn't the same anyway. So, can, so can, um, yeah. can I bring in the B word, which is behaviorism? Um, sure. so, now, a lot of people will say, "Look, I like this Stephen Crashing guy. I like him. He's got some good yeah, ideas." A lot of people say that. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. He's a nice guy. He's funny. He's got some good ideas. But good jokes about the coffee. <laughs> yeah, but. Okay. I feel that in the development of something like this, there needs to be repetition, feedback, and then by feedback, I generally mean correction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, mm -hmm. repetition and feedback. Um, what would you say to those people? Yeah, I would. I would say maybe they're too concerned about the idea of fossilizing. If I don't get it right early and accurate, yeah. then I'm ruined. And I, yeah. I don't think that's what we see generally. And I, I'm speaking anecdotally, but also thinking about research ideas. Um, anecdotally, my own experience was pretty lousy uh, okay. pronunciation accuracy in my yeah. Chinese. I mean, I sounded uh -huh. very awkward. And why do, why do I know that? Because people looked at me like this when I tried speaking Chinese the first two years okay. in my college study of Chinese. Okay. Traditional approach, grammar study, vocab yeah. study. Um, mm -hmm. practicing production. Um, so that kind of thing didn't turn me out sounding like something that they could understand very well. Okay. And so, so I mean, I was very focused on this kind of thing. Like, like people want to feel a sense of control over their own outcome yeah, exactly. in I language think, learning. 
I think that can be. Yeah. And, and if you just kind of relax with it, it I think the majority, 95% of what you need to be able to develop spoken proficiency in the language, I think it's going to be okay. I, having said that, like, I know that people can develop bad habits early. I yeah. think that often happens. But I think that happens with the control too, though. too early. Yeah. That's I, I, yeah. Yeah. I think because sometimes you have to come up with communication strategies to make up for your lack of knowledge. And it can yeah. be that rather than anything else that sort of, and yeah. I, I think that's what happened to Schmidt's famous Wes. <laughs> interesting yeah yeah that could be yeah. yeah what yeah what I what I overwhelmingly find is that students are 95 percent just fine with their pronunciation um I also there's a, a to offer evidence um there is a video that I have on my YouTube channel too that has high school students I taught um, yeah. They had about 100 hours of class time per year. That was it for exposure to Mandarin. Um, mm -hmm. And we did some spoken interviews at the end of the school year. And I, a few of them allowed me to share the videos on YouTube. Okay. So parents well, signed permission. Well. <laughs> yeah. So so you can hear them. You know, can you understand them? Do they sound clear? You know, is it perfect? Well, you know, do we expect monolingual speaker totally I, th I think here's one of the things in in mandarin for mandarin speaking teachers i think that the the heavy emphasis in mainland china on standardized pronunciation of mandarin native speakers go around talking about each other's mandarin and rating it and critiquing wow, that must it be really stressful <sighs> yeah i and, that and is so language anxiety. when they <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. And so and they'll they'll say it about themselves. Oh, I I'm from so such and such a place. So, you know, my Mandarin speaking isn't all that good. And like I, wow. I it, it makes me cringe inside wow. to hear it. It's very common, though. And so I think that carries over into the mindset of the Chinese language teaching community. So okay. we have that added social burden of, you know, you have to have this perfect pronunciation, not only because, oh, if you practice it wrong, you'll keep it wrong, which I think is not really so. Did you know, uh, but apparently, selling, I may not be right on this, anecdotally, I'm saying this, everyone, selling her himself regretted the term fossilization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think people misunderstand that kind of thing. I think it's actually quite rare that people have really kind of, it's more like people just stopped. You yeah. know, like they got to the point in well, the they having proficiency simple, they needed. No? Yeah. You know, it, it's accomplishing what they want. And so why would they continue? Well, it's like what you're through? saying, though, what you said, I think, earlier, no, about like teaching the classes in Chinese and getting this new level of input from the students, no? Right. Yes. Maybe yeah. if you hadn't had that, then you might have believed yourself to have fossilized. But mm, because you've yeah. had it, it's a new thing. I don't I pretty much don't believe in fossilizing at all. So <laughs> I was okay. But yeah, somebody else might have said, well, you know, she's kind of hit the, the point she's where fossilized. she's never going to. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So, Interesting. Yeah. So, um, so the, the problem of like, let's say you were taught in a very typical kind of a Chinese language classroom where the teacher expected accurate pronunciation practiced from day one. Yeah. And the belief system was kind of what you said, more tied to a behaviorist view, I would say, yeah. if that's the belief system that's being operated on in the classroom. So let's say that's what you had for two years of self of study. And now yeah. you're like, you have all this stuff. What I would do is start listening to graded content, again, okay. highly comprehensible content and listening mm -hmm. to lots of it. Mm -hmm. And, and and to some degree, kind of with the automatic language growth people in mind, listening to some things like passively. This is something I learned from Ali Linga at um, Hacking Chinese. Okay. He does passive listening, too. So just play the radio in the background. Just okay. get your mind used to how yeah. Chinese sounds and flows and what sounds are present without focusing always on analyzing it or yeah, understanding I, I every part of it. Yeah. yeah. So just getting used to the prosody of the language, the way that it. Look. I mean, I mean, I've listened to so much football in Spanish, and I'm not paying attention to it. Yeah. <laughs> and that kind of thing can be really great for you to to like feel what sounds. I'm watching normal, the game. I'm not really typical. Yeah. 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 I can. And I mean, there's a famous study. It's actually from Taiwan, 
and a guy who developed very sort of very quite good English. I think it was in his Stephen Crash and edited journal, just listening to baseball games. And a lot mm-hmm. of that he won't have been focusing on the game totally. A lot of that, I guess, was just washing over him. But his yeah, brain but was he was getting enough. Better, yeah, you know? yeah. When you have that like incomprehensible language, now I think you you now you're talking about more hours of time needed to get there to to your own productive ability. But yeah, yeah, it, I, okay. it can be done. Yeah, and a mixture of the two is ideal. That's what you're saying, no? So some stuff just on in the background, and some stuff where you're actually focused on comprehending the input. I, I don't know where I would put ideal. I think okay. it maybe depends on your goals too. Okay. And yeah, so but okay. like, for example, I played music a lot in the classroom. Okay. Um, it's harder to do when you're teaching online, but like students were working on something, I would play Chinese music um, and right. just to let them hear stuff. Yeah. And then like, oh, I really like that one. Uh, let's find out what that one's called. And then some of them were motivated to actually learn okay. lyrics and understand them. But but really, the goal there is just like what sounds sounds okay. right in, in okay. Chinese. And then, div- and I think then that all can the be time at least that connection with the culture, no? Through things. Yeah, like that. that's true, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, getting a sense for culture and the way that people communicate. And breaking down barriers in their own mind, any biases that they have. No, I only like Western music. Potentially. But better, yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much, Diane. That was that was a fascinating, sure. fascinating insight into the acquisition of um of Chinese. Can I just ask just to just to ask you to say where can our viewers find you? They can find you on YouTube at... Mm-hmm. Yeah, my name, which I don't know if your recording shows the how yeah, to spell it. it. Yeah. So, <laughs> Di- okay, Diane Neubauer, N-E-U-B-A-U-E-R. If you put my name, Diane Neubauer, in Chinese, you'll probably come up with my YouTube channel pretty quickly. Okay. Um, I'll admit it's not the most super organized channel. Okay. So there yeah. are some kinds of content... Not as easy as people intro- think that. <laughs> yeah, the intro the intro message kind of explains some videos are there really more for examples for Chinese teachers of teaching practices okay. or explanations of teaching. Um, a lot of them are read along videos designed for learners and okay. some are videos with my chickens or I'm doing something I'm out and about and I'm taking a little quick. You've got to watch these chicken videos. Five minute people. videos. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they're, they're fun. They're fun. I'm so, up um, on Twitter as well no. I am on Twitter, uh, not as heavily as I might be, but I, I am there. Um, so that is Du Yanzi, D-U-Y-A-N-Z-I. That is my Chinese name. Okay. Um, in in a Chinese context, you, you get a Chinese name typically. I mean, it. Okay. I know there's a controversy about that, but it's, there's it's a, a discussion. Reason. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I wouldn't do it for myself in a Spanish or a French context. I would just use my english name which is actually kind of german and greek i believe but uh diane is i think from greek originally it sounds about right yeah 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 Yeah. so at at any rate like in um in chinese there's no way to fully transliterate my name you know in a way that is recognizable as a name and so to have a chinese name like another person would have in China it it helps you people to recognize oh this is a person this isn't just like (laughs) you know there are transliterations of famous international people like Tom Hanks I just said his name but Uh, but people oh "Oh, that's somebody from outside kind of feel they translate names between I mean Queen Elizabeth was La Reina Isabella in Spanish (laughs) sure yeah 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 so they Names are translated. Yeah. Um, okay. And so they can find you on Twitter. Yeah. Is there, any, is there yes. anywhere else online people can, can find I'm not you? on Instagram at this point in time. I do a lot on Facebook and I have a lot of language teacher friends on Facebook. So um, if you're Facebook friend, I, I I would say like 80% of what I post is related to language or language okay. teaching in some way, it seems like, or language learning as well. So, so we're going to put all of the links, which is going to be quite... So re- I really advise, if you're watching this video, yeah, don't ignore the description of the video <laughs> because they're going to be posted. <laughs> yeah, all of the different mentioned links. some, Diane yeah, some, mentioned like for finding well. resources yeah, beyond exactly. just what I do. Yeah, so mining this so that students can really mine this for 
for comprehensible input, for resources, Great. and can really associate what you've said in the video with actual contextualized things. So thank you so much, Diane. Uh, oh, you just put the ch changing. Um, so that, that I was just saying so that they can associate the ideas that you've said in the video with actual concrete okay. activities. Um, so thank you so much again, Dan. That was mm -hmm. fascinating. And we'll, um, yeah, um, we're, 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 we're hopefully hear from you again as a friend of the channel. Thank you, Diane. Oh, sure. Bye. Yeah, thanks. Pleasure talking to you.